hope you're doing well today. Got a fun project we're gonna do. First, there's a box over there and it's alive. There's a cat in it. Anytime you open a box and take something out, everybody jumps in and thinks it's a game. But anyway, we're gonna build a banjo, okay? So I've gotten a kit banjo from carverbanjos.com. This is the Americana kit that we're gonna put together. I'll put a picture of it, of all the parts up over here. But I want you to check out something. Um, you just, with minimal sanding and minimal work, you don't even hardly need any tools at all, you can build a really cool banjo. Um, so this is the neck, and uh, it's a piece of black walnut. And uh, he shapes it pretty well. I mean, all I'm going to do is just lightly sand everything to smooth it out. Uh, it's really got a nice shape to it already. So I'm not going to do much more than just get it really smooth. I actually requested, I saw that he had some um, sap wood that he had used and some other ones. And I actually requested a piece of sap wood. Some people don't like that. But um, anyway, I think that really looks cool. So th there's the neck. He steam bends all his rims. Um, and I believe this is white ash. And this is the dowel and the neck attachment piece and this is going to have a tack on goatskin head so it comes with that and all your tacks and your leather um tail piece your friction tuners everything you need is in here and um he also gives you written instructions and he also has some videos but what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a step-by-step -step video here of what i'm going to do to put this thing together for you um and I'll put his link down below, too, if you want to check him out. He's got a bunch of different kits. He's got some fretless minstrel. Uh, he's got a fretless minstrel. He's got a travel. He's got a mountain. He's got this, the Americana. He could have another one that I'm forgetting. This Americana kit is $249.99. And, um, you know, based on everything, you know, his woods and everything, um, I'm sure the price can change, you know. But at this time, right now... The Americana kit is $249 plus shipping. But uh, anyway, it's going to be a fun little project. I'm going to finish it off with some tongue oil. So I'm not going to be putting any stain or anything like that on there. And i um, going to be having a cool sounding banjo pretty soon. So, all right, let's get into this. Okay, so for step one, uh, you want to check and make sure you have all your materials that you should. Um, so once you open up your box, just check and make sure you've got everything. Uh, and he has it listed on his sheet as well as to what's included. Um, so, and he also tells you the tools required. He says large Phillips head, screwdriver, small flat head screwdriver, wood glue, and sandpaper. 220 and 320 grit and some varnish. Okay, one thing about the neck. Um, this right here, okay. This is where it attaches to the rim. Don't sand that. You see how we've got a nice curve here? Don't sand that part because that, that fits really nicely up against your rim already. So you don't want to sand that and mess with that curve there, okay? So that's the only thing that you shouldn't sand out of the whole kit. All right, so first we're going to hit it with some 220. And um, we're just both going to sand at the same time that way. Uh, we'll get it done faster, but we're also going to use a sanding block uh, for like the straight pieces and stuff like that. Uh, and then some hand sanding.
So this is the sanded down neck and really not even 20 minutes of sanding to get it very, very smooth. Um, and I think we are going to run the 330 on it just to see. I mean, I, you don't need it. Really, the 220 did an amazing job there. Um, and I will be dressing the fret edges just a touch because, you know, they're, they're not really sharp or anything, but I just like them rounded off so that I won't feel them as I go by. But, oh, it sanded up beautifully. Okay, so now I've got the 320 and I'm just going to lightly uh, go over the neck just real lightly to see what what more that'll do, which I don't even think it's going to be much. It, you'll feel it. Oh, you feel that right there? Very hard piece of wood. Oh, yeah. It feels so nice. So smooth. We just kind of rounded off the edges of everything, also. Oh, yeah, that feels so good. I'm rounding the edge off where your thumb will hit as well because that, that's a sharp edge kind of. So you want to make sure you round that off if you ever want to play kind of scoop style or if your thumb might ever hit that. That'll feel a lot better. Oh, yeah. I'm down here. You want me to do a little on the... I don't think that... Yeah, thumb? yeah, I do. I mean, this don't but that, much. that's not even exposed outside of the banjo except for that one little piece. Everything yeah, else is in the rim. <laughs> Everything else is in the rim. Look, feel that. What that yeah, did. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah really nice. good. Feels really nice. Yeah. I think, uh... Really, I mean, what have we spent? Maybe 30, not even 30 minutes of sanding, and I haven't, uh, this is the only thing I've sanded. Yeah, not, uh, not any time at all. No, it's very close to, be, I mean, you could put it together as is and play it. Oh, yeah. Just like he advertises. It's you just, could just a little. You could just put it together and play it right angular, from there. I guess you could say. And I told you before, though, make sure you don't mess with this angle here on the bottom of your neck because that's where it attaches to the rim. I just want to reiterate that. If you want a nice looking finished product, you know, you want that angle to be right. And he's cut it right, you know, so. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that feels good right there. Yeah, I think. Standing. Was that a fox? What is that? I don't know. It sounds like a fox. It sounded like it was off that old. I heard it again. And he doesn't like whatever it is. We do have foxes and stuff that like to get chickens, unfortunately. Okay, I'm not, I, I don't want to mess with it anymore. I think it's great. I just heard it. 
it again. Oh, I can't tell what it is. Okay, so the next step. So the next step after this is going to be just to uh, put the tongue oil on it and finish it. Um, and I said that, but I, I need to. Uh, I don't either. <laughs> Maybe it's a weird noise. Um, but the only other thing I want to do here, and again, the frets are not bad, but I do want them just, just rounded on the edges on either side. So I'll do that and then apply the tongue oil so that that'll dry. Kind of reminds me of when that uh, snake caught the screech owl. Oh, you're right. It does a little bit. I hope that's not what's going on. Mm-hmm. That's going to be neat. Okay. We've got a supper we've got to get to, so we can't do much more today. But there we go. Sanding. Okay, now if you got it all sanded up, take an old shirt or something, whatever rag you're going to use, and wipe all the dust off of it. And then we're going to apply... Our tongue oil. Um, he recommends another type of oil in there. Uh, but you can use tongue oil or lins boiled linseed oil. A bunch of different things. Um, but that's what I'm going to use. So. Okay. So let's try this. I don't know how much this, how this glove is going to work. Oh, okay. I didn't want to get this all over me, so. Uh, yeah. But this may not be practical to do the way I have done it here. Oh. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to start on this because it's the easy thing to start on, I believe. <clears throat> well. You got to push and turn. Oh. And I, I, I tried that and it didn't want didn't want to do for me. It's a little dented. Let me push down on the surface. It's just been dropped you on, okay, the, on the lid. Come on, Penny. come on. Okay, so we're gonna get some. And then we'll go to town with it. And this will bring out the... This, uh, one thing uh, with tongue oil over uh, linseed oil, boiled linseed oil will add a little yellowing. And tongue oil is clear it dries clear so there won't be any yellowing and no yellowing with time with tongue oil it does cost more uh than the boiled linseed but you won't get any any yellowing at all with it in other words Okay, so there we go there. That piece is fully covered. And I wouldn't stain it or anything. Anyway, 
um, I like the natural wood. My um, my stone banjo, the neck and pot and everything, it's, it's oiled. It is not stained as well. So you're going to want to let this um, sit for a minute, probably about 15 minutes or so, and then come back and wipe it and remove any excess. And then you may want to apply another coat. Up to you. I think I'll just have to see what it, what it, how it soaks in, but I may only do one coat. We'll see. But I'm doing this outside, so I don't need a mask or anything like that. If I was doing it in the garage or something, I would probably, I'd probably wear a mask. But it does no good unless you have one of those good, good ones. Um, and then with any of your finishing oil that you use, obviously you want to throw away your rags. You don't want to keep them around because they are flammable and combustible but so I'm just putting a light coat on here and then I will come back again and um, wipe it down just to remove any excess so that it'll more evenly dry and everything But that's going to be beautiful. Um, okay, the room is done. And now we'll move on to the neck. I wanted to see how it was going to apply before I went crazy with it. Yeah. Oh, and I did not... I decided against working on the frets because... I wanted a quick build here and as I said they're not bad so I, I'm not gonna worry about that at all and you don't want to finish you don't want to have a lot of finish on your rag when you're doing the hole around the holes you don't want to finish inside the hole and you don't want to um, drip any down in there either okay uh, for where your tuners go because we've got friction pegs and we want that wood to be raw wood against raw wood. There. Oh, that's going to be so pretty. Look how beautiful that grain is. It's going to be pretty. Wait right, till I hit this fretboard with it. These gloves are gigantic. Can they look silly? I know. <laughs> it always... You should always have the right tool to do the job you're doing. <laughs> and I, my gloves are a little big, I guess. But that sap line is going to be real pretty, too. Here. Really pretty. But yeah, I didn't want to mess with the frets, so I left them. They're fine. And that's something later on down the road you can always do. You just have to carefully tape your entire fretboard off. And I didn't want to take the time and do that. You just have to carefully tape, tape the entire fretboard off. And um, then use your file to just, just slightly round off and dress the frets the rest of the way. They're fine right now, as I said. Oh, yeah, look how pretty that turned out. That's really nice. That's going to be beautiful. I'm going to give you a close-up of that net, too. Wet like that. Um, I wish, let's see. The lighting. Oh, that's pretty. So pretty. Alright, so we got our, our coat of it on there. And we will just wait a bit. And then we'll come back and wipe off the excess. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful. All right, so now I'm just gonna wipe down with a clean cloth. I'm just 
going to wipe it down again. It's not really pooled or anything anywhere. It just soaked it right in. So it says allow 24 hours before applying the next coat. So tomorrow what we'll do is we'll apply the other coat. And then later on tomorrow, I reckon, we will apply the tech head to it. So tomorrow we'll apply another coat and then um, it won't need quite as much dry time and we will tack on our goatskin head that we will need to soak in water before applying, before uh, installing it. Okay, we're ready to go. On to the next step. Hey Stormy, that's it, we're good to go. This can really be a very quick project. Um, I think he said 90 minutes and really, uh, if you didn't want to apply your oil to it, yeah, 30 minutes of your 90 minutes is just soaking your thing. It don't even take that long because we didn't even spend a half hour sanding it. And um, so it is going to be really nice. Very nice little kit here. I'm impressed with it. Okay, see you tomorrow. Okay, so now I'm filling up the sink with warmish water. Not not very warm, but just not cold. We basically have icicles coming out of our pipes. It's so cold. But uh, So we're going to soak the skin for 30 minutes. So I'm just going to get it all... As you get it wet, it just opens right up, too. So we're just going to... Get that good and covered. So I'll put a little more water in it and then we'll start the timer. All right, so now I've got the rest of the parts. Um, while that goat skin is soaking, I'm gonna go ahead and attach everything. Um, now I did end up <clears throat> with I only used one coat of that tongue oil, and it's perfectly fine. Um, I may go back later and do it, but I, it's perfectly fine. I'm not going to be running around getting it wet or anything. So, um, I'll get out my parts here. Let's see. I'm looking for a specific thing. The three large screws. Got them right here. This is what's going to attach the neck to the dowel stick. Is these three brass looking screws. So we'll just get them started here. And, um,. <clears throat> get that attached and he's got he's got the holes <clears throat> to where you can countersink the screws too which is nice but let me grab a screwdriver and we'll do that step screwdriver we've got this little baby tool kit <laughs> upstairs <clears throat> All the rest of the tools are in the basement, but all right, so we're just attaching that. <clears throat> now he does say to attach it with some wood glue in between but I don't I don't feel the need to do that so I don't feel like these these three screws are not going to be coming out and I may want to take it apart and um, refinish it you know with more tongue oil <clears throat> so it's not to make a mess 
it's easier just to take it apart. So I don't really want to glue it. So there we go. That's nice and tight. And now I have the neck put together. And it fits nicely. All right. Then we will, let's see, what does he say next? Connect the dowel. I've got that. And then I'm going to connect the dowel to the, um, I'm not going to connect the dowel to the, rim, to the rim yet. And the reason for that is because of the tack, the, um, the tack head part. I'm not going to be able to do that yet. So what I'm, what I'm going to be able to do though, is I'm going to go ahead and attach the strings to this tail piece that he has, this really thick leather tail piece. Um, and the instructions don't have instructions on the goat skin. And he refers you to a video for that. Um, I think he needs to update that. But, um, I guess I'll just put the strings on. Now, I'm not big on nylon strings. I haven't tried too much with them that's your first and your well where is that oh that's the second string first string third string okay all right I'm gonna thread this through the hole And then I'm going to come up and loop it probably three times. And then I'm going to come under the hole. Well, basically just through the hole and pull it tight. And that's not wanting to do. So there we go, that tightened down nicely. And you can always come back and cut off your excess later. I'm gonna go ahead and knot it again. Cause I did watch the video and he did that as well. He just, after he did the loop knot, he just, uh, the, the twisty loop knot, he just went again. And it reminds me of, of what you would do to a lure. Although this is thicker than any fishing line I've used. <laughs> but there we go. So there's number one. I'll just do that with the rest of them. So as this um, timer goes off, then we'll get our skin out of the sink.
Okay, so this skin is very pliable now. It is just really nice. So I'm just gonna drain out the water and let it drip dry a little bit. Then we will install it next. All right, I hope you enjoyed that, got something out of it. And before I go, I always wanna remind you that Jesus loves you.